motherfucking bastards episode. Sorry, yeah, but bastards yeah, a little, council. A little early on that one. Episode forty-five. I don't know. 45. You can't see us, bitch. Why don't you just let everyone know? <laughs> <laughs> we're fucking invisible. Are we John man. Cena today? This is the John Cena. John yeah. Cena sucks. Yeah, so we're testing out. We're going faceless. Since everybody just listens to us, we figured. Well, we don't need video. I'm speaking directly to you, by the way. Whoever's so, you're listening right now. Right I'm now. speaking to you. And you're not speaking to me. I'm sp- no, I'm you not know, speaking to John. I'm speaking I, to I you. Like, I like the way when you're speaking to the listeners. I'm looking. Now at you're looking at your microphone. microphone. <laughs> it's amazing. He's, he's like, I'm speaking <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, his microphone. You know, there's something that used to be back in the days. People, when they started recording shit like this, they used to have a voicemail. I think we should have that. I mean, a voicemail. We have voicemail. No, no, but I mean, we have a phone number that we publish and we say, leave us voicemail. No, so then what the fuck's the matter yeah, with you? They used to do that 20 years ago. Yes. Yeah, that's why it stayed 20 years ago. <laughs> I want to bring it back. I want to bring it back. It's right now called tweets. Okay. It's called podcasts. <laughs> you, you go and you. You put yourself out there, and people can say whatever the fuck they want. And this right? is a fucking... problem. No, you... it's actually a problem. No, but then you filter the message you bring on, man. No, you, know what's, you know what's going on? You can't put a filter on the internet. Do you want to hear someone actually yell at you? Yes. That's weird. It's funny, man. Mm. Okay, you know what? I'll get the phone. It's going to be a prepaid phone, incoming only. Call me, leave messages. You don't need to do that. All you got to get is okay, like, yeah, right, I'm not going to give my phone number. I'm you know what I mean? Number all, you're just going to get like 200 messages at the end of the week of me and Armin calling you just because. And that's amazing. No, we could just do that regardless now. Yeah, and, I could send you voice messages. And why, why have calls? Yeah. Yeah. A year ago, this guy was filming himself, leaving in messages, but now you don't want just to leave messages. That was a year. funny one. No, it hasn't been a year. It was this year we started. Come on, guys. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is n- the phones, okay? You know what the least <laughs> you know what the least used feature of a phone is today? The phone, phone feature. feature. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually make phone calls with it anymore. Anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about this in two months. You know when you guys gotta ask me, Ivy, I was the voicemail this week. Yeah. No, but, <laughs> you know what I'm no, yeah, but you know, you know what's funny is that right now, when do we actually use our phone? When we have to do something important, like I'll call work. our credit card yeah, company, yeah, something. Like we have that. to call, uh, I don't know, our cable company or something. Work. You want to call your friends? You want to call? Well, maybe my mother. No, even my mother now is texting. Yeah. Less than five percent of your phone's lifetime use is actually making a phone call. Less than five percent. No, maybe but not I'm, for you. I'm no. a minority in this shit. Yeah. You have a business to run. You have a business. The, yeah, you know, well, people no, that's call. But that's your lot. business. But if phone. you take out the amount of calls I get for work, yeah, man, I'm swamped. Dude, I have dick pics and shit like that. That's what I'm using. I have dick 40 pics. calls yeah. a day. What about twat, twat, uh, twat shots? Let me ask you. Do you? Do you? Uh, <laughs> that's your business phone. Do you yeah, put that on your income taxes? Dick pics? No, I don't. Do you put that on your taxes? No, you should. Why not? No. Why? I don't because first look, I should right. Yeah. Yeah, I should, but then I have to like make it a no, no. Just make I've, it an expense. I've, yeah, I've exercised all the options about this. I already have an expense with two phone lines at work. Um, I forward it to my cell phone when I want to, um, but sometimes I just don't forward it to my cell phone because I don't need work reaching me. Fair enough. Uh, so but Armin, like, would you have space for one extra line for incoming calls only? I go to my Polish be like, hey, um, you don't got a phone line anymore. So you, if I see you answer this fucking phone, I'll break your fingers. <laughs> this goes to voicemail, you know. So jumping matters. Here. Wait, it's funny. One second. Okay. It's funny you mentioned Twitter, but you don't even use Twitter. You don't. Yeah, you don't use. Yeah, you don't even know what Twitter you don't even looks have like. Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. No, you no, aren't. He's I on just... Snapgram and Instachat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know. Well, I don't have to be on that stuff. I use your phone to go through people's things like that. On Twitter? Not anymore. No, not Twitter. I'm not interested in fucking Twitter. And you know what? It's probably a good thing because people, regular people that are like obsessed with Twitter. I have access to like Twitter. It seems like their life gets account. fucked up. Their life does get I fucked up. I can go look at what people put on Twitter anyway without having a fucking account. Listen, all you got to do. Every now and then it tells you, you sure you don't want to make an account? I'm like, I'm sure I want to make a fucking account. But I don't give a shit unless I'm like stalking a porn star or uh, something. Probably like, better. Yeah, it's probably better. You know? No, so, yeah, we look at what happens that. with. Uh, with uh, but I just want to touch on his voicemail idea. Something ancient but really cool. Skin Lab, which is like the most that. successful, unsuccessful band in metal. Yeah, it's true. You know? uh, I only know everybody them. fucking knows them, but nobody <laughs> likes them. Yeah, but and nobody dislikes them. Yeah, I guess. But they put their sure. new record out at that time in 99. I even forget what the hell it's called right now, or 2000, more like. And they had a phone line you can call, which they were announcing that I call and leave voicemails, and it'll get on the album. And somewhere on that album, 
my voicemail is over there. Nice. Because I said something about the as the music uh, rip out your sternum and jab it in your ear, some weird thing like that kind of. I'm pretty sure it's on there. Or you're able to call and hear the voicemails. No, they put on the album. The last track on the album is a bunch of voicemails. People left them. Amazing. So you're on an album officially. And, and, and is it? I'm pretty sure, yeah. And, and I, I thought you were going to go with something else about, about Tharsh or Ash. Tharsh. Yeah. Uh, because That's there was, cheap. I don't know if, uh, if if they had something to do with it, but I do know on the haunted, I think it's on the uh, the second album, made me do it. I think in the leaner notes, there's thrash eats balls. Oh, there is. There's all kinds of albums that have that. It's fucked up. I love it. So thrash eats balls. Thrash eats, thar-sheets balls. Yeah, thar-sheets balls. Yeah, you had mentioned this before. Yeah. So right before we started, you know, recording this podcast. We were outside hanging out. Hanging John out. had the screen door open, the, mm. the door wide open. The reason no, is, t- let me let me the tell you why. Let me tell you why I do this. Yeah. Okay, my place gets ridiculously hot. Okay, when I come in in the day, it's twenty six <laughs> degrees, and because this condo, okay, they turn off the compressor, so I can't turn on my air conditioner anymore, and as a result, I have to open the fucking door just to get some cold air in here now. And I was afraid of bugs, but now I guess it's too cold for it bugs. It doesn't matter. His screen doesn't matter. was closed. But it was a habit that for the last month or so. So the screen door was, was closed, screen but the door was open. The door was open. Door was open. Yeah. We were, we were, we were hanging outside, and then Ivy decided to go in and set up. No. Yes. Ivy wanted to piss. got the weird premonition that he could walk through screen doors. You just ruined the surprise. No, no. I, I did say watch this. Yeah, you know, it's like he did it with conviction. That was not. What were you doing? Watch this for? No, you know, magician when they say watch this and yeah, then walk yeah, through yeah. a window, but actually, he didn't, didn't do any of that. that. I did say that. He just I, went I to walk in. just walked in the yeah. fucking screen. Man. What so, were you going to do? Why did you? Get I was up? going heading to the bathroom. I say, guys, just oh. take a piss. Then I fuck it. Because what a sound! Because dude, we've been coming here for years, and this door it's open, but there's no screen. This is added recently, right? No, that's no, no. It's always been there. It was never present. In, Vin, in Vin my... slammed into it last year. No, but yeah. I'm saying <laughs> usually this screen is not on. So it's a door open or off. Well, I, yeah, because of air conditioning. As, you, what, as you mentioned, I walked into it, right? Yeah. I, know, I had I the like, same problem last year. I know, year. everyone was laughing at me. And I was like, that was funny. I walked through the door, ha, ha, ha. And then I, today, sitting outside, I had the perfect view because Armin was on the, <laughs> the right of me, John was on the left of me, and the screen door was right in my field of view. So I see J- uh, Ivy go, and b- before I even realized what was going on, he just walked right into it. He's like, ah! <laughs> and I just started yeah, dying. I know you can't see it, but my fucking nose is busted, man. Like, the rid of my nose is bleeding right now. Yeah, you took it hard in the face. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I was disoriented for like these three seconds. Too bad that know? we're not in the USA because you could have fucking sued this guy for <laughs> <laughs> you know, Who leaves the screen in fucking November? There's no bugs in November. And then, you know what I would do? I would sue the screen company there you for go. making a screen yeah. that didn't just come off. But this, yeah. bringing this up, why did I bring this up like that so harshly? Harshly? It was because it reminds me of the time Jimmy walked into a glass oh. door. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy does not this. walk into anything. No, he ran. Jimmy was it. standing by me and he was facing a closed it was, patio it was door. It was me and you on the balcony and in And the Wildwood. bird. And the... What bird? <laughs> the beak. Oh, the ah, beak. the beak. Right. The beak and... No! They, they were oh, there. Oh, they were there. <laughs> <laughs> no! The beak was there. Really? It was that night. Oh, yes. I thought right. they had, this was like later on or a different night. No, he, okay, that's fine. why we were outside and they were, the girls were on the balcony at the end. You were... I was sitting outside. next to you. You were sitting next to him. Oh, yeah. I was at the end of the balcony <laughs> looking at all of you guys right. and Jimmy was in front of me, in front of the patio door and... He looked at me and I know what he thought. He said, I'm gonna hit this motherfucker and I'm gonna run inside and he can't catch me. <laughs> so I don't know. I was hanging outside and he just slapped Sla- me. A whack. A, he gave me a slap and right in front of me, he darted as fast and as hard as he can right into a closed patio door, but he had his head down. <laughs> so he planted the top of his head right into a big glass patio door that. Shook and made that wooga 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 sound. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds and Jimmy collapsed to his knees on the floor. He was like, Immediately we're like, whoa, dude! <laughs> like, you you <laughs> might all right? You you, you might have had yeah, the you might have had the like the thought I'm gonna slap Jimmy, but you no. saw the screen. Uh, not screen yeah. hit the door. Jimmy, it was like, the funniest thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> 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 
His knees buckled immediately and he went right down. You know? I was like, oh, I think you're concussed, man. <laughs> That's why you didn't attack, retaliate. At all. <laughs> He's like, I you got what he caught. I was like, That's what you get, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to this retaliate. This is my house, motherfucker. Yeah, that's my house, motherfucker. Yeah, you really didn't have to retaliate. So, yeah, so there's that. So, speaking of the voicemail, man, I got a. Um, Tell you a story about uh, voicemail. Yeah, Satan. Uh, not those one. The, these one, it's for a later episode. Satan. Um, but uh, Satan. me and Pat, right? We uh, used to play the band called Strixberry. At one point, it was called Machiavellic Dementia, but back in the days, it was called uh, MD for Mass Disturbance. So that was the three names. MD. And MD Mass mm. Disturbance Machiavellic Dementia. Then we just switch it to Strixberry. Uh, that's one thing I always want to know. What the fuck does Strixberry mean? Well, Vyri is the art of creating virus, and a Strix is like an evil witch that, it's just an evil witch, so when you put those so, two okay. together, it's just huh. an evil witch. I never witch knew that. that Did but you it, know that? I thought it meant I have to shit in some but language. When it comes, <laughs> when it comes to, when we come no. to the Strix Vyri, like when it, come, when it came to, 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 to the name, I think the virus part of it was really more what we focused on, right. you know? Um, but anyway, so back in the days, I think at the beginning, what was the radio station, the university radio station? Uh, CKUT. Yeah, CKUT. Yeah. So it was me, well, it was uh, Strixberry, and we had, um, we were doing an interview with another band. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you guys are laughing about. I don't hear just you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it sounds like they're snorting cocaine or something, you know? Okay, like, it's good. I'm, I'm looking at Ivy and I just see Vin, like, really trying not to laugh in the microphone. Armin is dying looking down on the floor. It's just. Some shit happened on this side. It's on. You'll catch it when you listen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so all I wanted to say, we were at that radio station. We're doing an interview, right? Everything was going well. It was cool because any every time you get an interview in the radio, it's fun, right? <laughs> yes. Every oh my time, god! Every time. Yeah, every time you do an interview, it's fun. I got you. Okay, perfect. Oh, but not. I. Anyways, so at one point, so me and Pat, we do the interview. We're very happy about it. We go back in my car. I used to have a Ford Temple. And so, and we continue listening to that same radio station because we're kind of excited. Like you're 18, whatever, you know, like uh, Sarah, you're doing a radio interview. We're already into it. So then at one point they start taking calls. Like I was saying with the voicemail before. So we can just call like any radio station. <laughs> so then me and Pat, we were uh, uh, just having fun in my car. Let's say listening to radio. So you know me, right? I'm kind of random. So I say, I'm going to call in and I'm just going to say something fucking random just to see the, re the reaction. So I call, I get the line. I don't know what the name I said, uh, who I was. I say, anyways, my name is Rogers. I just want to talk in. Okay, perfect. You'll be like the second one in. So when I say, all right, now we have Rogers online. What do you have to say? <laughs> so I just went in. I remember, man, I was holding my cell phone or the device. It was like, Pierre Lambert, du national, Yevid Scar. <laughs> what? <laughs> he had a heart. <laughs> I get it. And then I stuck. I get it. But... It's in Las Vegas. So the guy was like, okay, ça c'est spécial. Tu as autre chose à dire? Then we hang up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I just remember me and Pat like, Pierre Lambert. Anyways, to that day, I don't know, maybe they're listening, but we never went through and said it was, it was us, right? But just that feeling of leaving something random you enjoy was just that. fucking amazing. It, it's fun to be Imagine, just imagine, you go somewhere, you do like somehow a s serious interview, but then 15 minutes later, you're that same guy calling yeah. in and just saying like something you. stupid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Amazing, amazing. So, well, what, uh, Armin still looks like he's dying here. <laughs> no, I just, well, I have nothing actually at what he said this time. I think it's good. What I was laughing at before is totally different. Ima imagine, imagine uh, Milk. Saying it now. <laughs> Strix body. <laughs> what is Strix body? Strix, Strix you know what? Body. I always I always associated Strix with Pat, Viri with Ivy. I always thought the V yeah, was, I thought was that, for Viri. When you just said it now, I thought it was because of like IV or yeah, something. Yeah, and, and I just figured uh and I figured Dave was just like Dave. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you know, you know <laughs> like like a like a DJ in a rap group, you know, like you have you have Run DMC, 
And you have Jam Master J, who's their DJ. <laughs> That's what I thought. Like, you know what's funny? Now? You don't understand. Like uh, back in back in the days in, in that band, like I know Strix, Pats. You know, you go yeah. to the name of Strix. Yeah, it was always and Pat Strix. Strix and you, because of yeah. Ivy, like you, you kind of make the link. But by the end of the day, man, like the geniusness of what David brought to that band was fucking amazing. Mm. You know, like I mean, I did the drum shit. Pat did his fucking music thing, but David just brought like. And they, and they brought La Sauce. Oh, he brought brought La Sauce. Sauce. You know what? Speaking I was of, always happy to play with him. Speaking of David, because David was in Ashes of Eden. Yes. And you saw what Simon Splashes posted. Splashes of semen. What did Simon Simon post? posted a thing. Um, you remember, you'll remember this show. He, so he posted a flyer. I saw the flyer. I know what show you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, with form. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was Andy. Because uh, Dave Andy just made me reminded me of that. So Andy's first show with form. We were at that show. Yeah. That was 11 fucking years yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. We're fucking geezers, and man. And like I pointed out to <laughs> Raza, I'm like, I was... No, you guys right now are older than I was when I was at that show. <laughs> like, that's yeah. fucked up. Yo, it's I'm funny. the same age. It's funny how Raza say this. No, who yeah. Simon say that? I, I don't remember this show. Yeah, Simon was the one. It's like, I don't really and remember he played that show. night, right? Yeah, he played that night. And Strix already played that night, and I don't remember that show as well, man. Strix huh. funny. I remember being at that show and everything. So I like, guess it's something, right? What's cool, what? what's cool about the Strix name is now there's um, a graphics card called the Strix. It's really? spelled the same way, yeah, with a Y and everything. It's uh, I was like, hey, Pat got his own graphics card. That's cool. See, if we're in the States, you could have sued the pants off those guys too. But you know what's They're funny at one point, Armin? You know what's funny at one point, Armin? Because Andy played with us for a little while, and we did play a few shows with him. So at one point, Strix Vary was kind of the... The remains of AOE. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, now if I, if, I, but if you just because we did laugh at one point about yeah. this, because we, 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 we knew what it was. It was like ashes of virus. <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, and, and on our side of the Strix fence, OE. you better believe with guys like me, Tim, Dono, and Mansoor, still was in the band at that time. When things like that happened, we were like, I guess. That's the leftovers. Of <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's what but I think it's funny. became part of leftovers of Eden too, because I, there's, there's, Ashes of Eden, everybody leaves our band, like the, you don't last, you know, you get fired or some shit happens in our band, right? If you're not me, Tim or Donald, at some point, everybody's been in and out of the band. Hey, wait, it's only you, Mike and Donald now, the originals. No, Tim's yeah. still in the band. What? He's just, you know, not playing drums with us right now. <laughs> But he's in the band. He's 100% in the band. He's like in the band how Demonaz is still in, uh, not Demonaz, what's his name? Yeah, in uh, in Immortal. He can't play guitar anymore on stage, but he'll right, still, still, write yeah. still writes lyrics for the band. That's That's cool, he still writes That's somehow? Cool. Who? Tim. Of course, I write music with him on the phone. Shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> it's oh, interesting. Fuck. But anyways, it's interesting. I mean, it's funny how you guys were laughing about how the remains and how we were laughing were the... The remains of AOE as well, because yeah. at one point, with me and Pat, that we've been playing music ever 96, where we're 15, uh, 16 years old. But then David came in, then Andy came in. But the time I enjoyed the most is when me, Pat, and David, we were, when we were like Strix very 100% at one point, but then Andy walked in and he kind of brought something different. I was in my comfort zone, but when Andy walked in, I kind of feel okay. This guy's a good musician, you know. So That's I kind of have to felt. step it up, you know. Like I'm, out, I'm out, I remember the first jump with Andy. I was like, me and Pat. I was doing my shit. Like I was comfortable. We were strict, very. But then Andy's gonna jump with us a little, and we're gonna do a few shows with him. But the first time he joined in, I was like, I remember playing and I remember thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like usually when you play, you don't think anymore because you know yeah. your fucking songs. But then Andy was. I was like, oh shit, oh that's good. I kind of have to step it up a little because this guy's fucking good. But that was the top of my like jamming right. experience. You know what I mean? When like, it was Remains of Eden. That Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it was, man. Andy. Remains of Eden is my best music career. He's ever. a hell of a fucking musician. Mm. And that guy, he was a kid when we started the band. Me and Mansoor wanted to start a band together. And we had the idea for three guitars. We had somebody else in mind already for the third guitars. And thank God we never went with that guy. And uh, and then we went to jam one night and to get high and just hang out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, we used to telemarket in those years, so it was like, oh, this is Andy and this is this guy, this is that guy. I met all those friends, Fez's friends actually, which are Mansoor's younger brother's friends. Mansoor plays guitar. Me, who was starting the band with him, Andy was there and he convinced us to bring our guitars to go jam. So I said, okay, let's go. At this point, I'm playing guitar almost five years, 
and we sat down and that he's a lot younger than i think andy's like what five years younger than me or something like he's that definitely four years younger, younger than i don't know how what his age is but yeah <clears throat> now it doesn't seem like a lot but when you're like 20 that means that guy just turned 16 years old you yeah. know what i mean and he <clears throat> took the guitars we sat down and he's like all right so let's jam i said okay what are we playing he was like play anything and i'm gonna play some leads on it and then we'll switch and i was like okay well what chords do you want me to play if you're going to be doing solos he was like you know whatever you want stick to your standards a minor e whatever i'll look at your hands he says you know just play some chords and find a uh, melody enough i'll join in in my head i was like fine your funeral dude i don't know how the fuck you're gonna do that if you don't know what i'm playing you know so i went and i made i invented a riff right away and this guy started singing to me with his guitar and <clears throat> did that for about 12 seconds. I stopped. I was like, how are you doing that? <laughs> you didn't know what I was going to play. He goes, yeah, but you're playing an E minor. I'm like, that doesn't mean shit to me. What do you mean? You know, just, <laughs> what is the E so, minor? <laughs> and, then, and then we just played more and more that day. And I was like, all right, cool. I like this guy. The next day I told Monsoor, I was like, I think we should do that three guitar thing with Andy. With you Andy, know? yeah. And uh, he came in and he was like, my, he taught me how to play solos. You know what I mean? He could... He was new to heavy metal. He had just discovered Ride the Lightning at that time. And oh, I was shit. like, you got a lot to learn, you know, in that department. This is down picking, you know, mm -hmm. like this is, this is how you play thrash metal. And he was like, oh, this is how you play a soul like Richie Blackmore. And I asked, well, how do you not know how to do that? You playing guitar for this long, you know, I was like, right, <laughs> <laughs> like is he, you know, so he showed me he made me a much better guitarist. You know, it was uh really cool jamming with that so i totally got it with y'all so i had to really step up my game with that little fart kid in yeah. front of me that was like playing solos around me and writing music he would write like he would shit five songs a week that's fucking and nice. i would be like in a month trying to put together four riffs being like yeah motherfucker i got mm. the beginning of the song down you know and andy would come with opuses written already <laughs> and we take like an eight minute song be like we can bring this to a three and a half minute killer heavy metal track yeah you know and and that's what what would happen most of the time but but imagine this guy bringing out the lead in the fucking like industrial electronic band oh, he can you know play anything Dude, he's a freak this guy is like th this guy knew he kind of had freedom you know and all his freedom was fucking welcome it's like yes 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 you know just do it yeah, yeah. it was fucking great man I love doing that shit with guitar. And hey, fucking this guy now, man. He's got a kid and everything now, man. I'm He's got a kid for him. Yeah, man. Holy shit. Yeah, man. It was huh. fucking cool, man. When I saw that on uh, the pictures and everything, I was like, fuck, man. Still got his long hair? Yeah. Hmm. And Zendi still has his long hair, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, still yeah. has long hair. You know, you're, it, you're on the other side of that coin now. No, I, just, I, I know, like, usually they have <clears throat> guys that have kids and then they just chop off their hair. No, I just chop my hair without kids, you know. But, yeah, I uh, know. I did. Or maybe he had a kid, but he did something. Oh, shit. Do you guys, do you guys remember the first jam that you had that felt like this is the first jam I'm having? The very first jam of my yeah, life. Both yeah. When you felt like I'm in a band type of shit. Oh, mm -hmm. in a band? Like, you know, like the feeling or, uh, the that first jam you, I No, had. the feeling that you're in a band. I'll tell you, me, Dano, and Tim. Okay. Dano's talent show in high school. He hadn't even met Tim yet. We had met Tim at a Slayer show or whatever. I knew Tim from Dawson and a couple of shows before that. And, you know, if you take the uh, S out of Slayer and put it at the end, it's Layers. It's a lot of Layers <laughs> of Slayer. Yeah, it's you know. <laughs> sponsored by Adam. So, we... Um, we decided we're going to play Roots Bloody Roots at Nano's talent show for his high school. And I told Tim, Tim said he could drum. So I was like, all right. And Dano was singing and playing bass. Dano and was singing. I swear, dude. And this is like, this is a long, this is 99 mm. uh, or something like that. And we went to, uh, to Tim's basement. We hung a recorder from the, a tape deck recorder from the ceiling. We had my PV amp, which was like a 12 inch amp. Dano had his little 12 inch bass amp and Tim had his drums and Dano was no microphone. He was singing, yelling into that thing, into the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and we recorded I can just picture that. And we recorded it. Okay. So we have a tape of that. Oh, the very first time we plugged in together and we played Roots Bloody Roots. We hadn't jammed it as a trio yet at all. We played it beginning until the end, recorded it. And we played a bunch of more songs after that. Mm. Whatever we can with down to guitars, because we're down to all the way to Roots, you know? Right. Boots, and ruddy boots. we convinced several of our friends after that that this is a Sepultura demo for Roots. 
<laughs> and they, James believed it James straight up. Tim did. Diamond believed it straight up. All the metal circle at Dawson, which who knows where the fuck they are today, but all those people in college, they all believed it. Well, and that's James the first jam, Alberta. man. I can't remember the first time I jammed with anybody. It, I was jamming with a lot of people very often. As a band, like the first band I ever had, I can't remember the first one. That's yeah. the thing, me too. I, I can't, can't remember, remember the first one, but I, we're not like saying that, oh, I'm in a band, but I can remember the very first time I jammed and it was at this place in Park like on Paul Bien, it was like a crack house. Yeah. And it stunk in there. And I remember every time you tried to- first place Yeah, every time there. you tried to reserve, oh, hey man, how's it going? Yeah, it you was know? the coolest fucking Yeah, it was cool, world, but man. he was always so like, this guy was <laughs> fucking high. All the time. All His the time. was right away when you came upstairs, yeah. right in front of the door right Right in front of the door. But when you would call him to reserve, he's like, hello? <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, I want to know if I, there's a room or blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, man, there's a room. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when you get there, you know, you, you, it, it reeks, dude. It reeks of some sort of fucking drugs. I remember the first time I played with people, like, that outside of, like, my house yeah. was, uh, people I was growing up with anyway, Zach and uh, a guy named Ty, I went to my buddy Zach's place, and I'd only been playing for, like, a year, so I was just, like, terrible. And they let, they, they let me know I was terrible, which was pretty funny. Uh, and then the year later, I just kept playing at home. I went to jam to another guy's place near my house, and that's where like comp competition got pretty good because he mm. was learning too and i was just naturally better than him because i had more experience under myself so that was like it got me better because he was learning from me and getting better quicker so i was like i can't let him catch up to me so made me better um then after that i no one was able to touch me in like for guitar playing in high school it was just like if you i learned everything after that very quickly ivy what what's up on your phone yeah, what's up no, on your phone? Because I was just thinking because when I got the drum, hmm. um, oh my God, it was 96. I was 15. My dad was the biggest was Elvis fan, you know? And at one point he was watching Elvis a concert. And it was at the song, it's now or never. So I, all I had was a, cow, a cowbell. So I was like, it's now or never. Like, doo -doo, tack, tack, doo -doo. I was hitting the cowboy. My Sharona. And it, 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 it kind of sounded like this, like, it's now or never. Dun, 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 dun. And I was playing that on the floor and eating the cowbell. And my dad saw, like, because he was a guitar player when he mm. was young, he's like, okay, he really likes that, right? So I think two days or three days later, I had money. I bought my first 300, I think it was $340 drum set. It was just like the drum, uh, the, 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 the bass drum two thumbs, the snare, and it, and one cymbal. And then I remember the first time I sat down and the thing I was looking at on my phone, it was this song. So that's the idiom track in uh, Nevermind from Nirvana. So when I had my drums set up, the first track I had was that it was like and all I saw from that song was them playing, throwing a guitar on the drum set, kicking the drum. First thing I did with the drum was pretty much destroying it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking in the basement. It sounds better with my mouth right now. I, I was not playing like this, but I remember kicking my fucking uh, bass drum. It went on the floor and I was hitting my cymbal and that was my fucking first time I played. Uh, <laughs> Every time you saw that, that song live, they killed the drum. So when I started, I killed the drum. I then, can't believe you kicked your own uh, drum the first uh, dude, time you got Seriously, it. the first time I got my drum set, I didn't know how to play drum, but all I knew about drums was this. Was that Nirvana. And Very kicking the floor era. thumb and kicking the fucking bass drum. And you know what? Best feeling ever, man. You know, it fucking felt great. I smashed the guitar once at a show. It was a bit more harder than I thought. Cause I kept slamming it on the side. I'm like, why isn't this thing fucking breaking? And then I realized you got to slam it face down <laughs> and then it goes fly. Uh, you know, like that first night I slammed my drum, it felt good. But afterwards, when I put it back on, I didn't hit it again because there's a value to that shit. Now, mm. if I break it, it's 300 bucks. You know what I'm saying? You kind of, you kind of think about this. Cause I, I figured if you play guitar and you smash your guitar, I was like, fuck, I don't know how much guitar costs, but it's just a thousand bucks I have to pay right now because i don't have that thing anymore 
Well, my, if I were to smash my main guitars, we're talking about a thousand, you know, thousand uh, dollars. Whatever. But I wouldn't smash those ones. Uh, the cheap ones, I bought one for eighty bucks off of uh, Kijiji. I was like, all right, he's selling it. It had the Van Halen paint already on it, which was cool. A terrible guitar. The action was like it takes twenty dollars tax if it's in the string and the fretboard. Um, but it was like I played Zeppelin on it, so we're talking about pretty easy. I kept my hands in one place and was able to play it. Uh, and you smashed. And it. then I smashed it right in. There's a video of it on my Facebook, uh, which was cool. Uh, so I get that feeling, but I don't ever want to smash another guitar again. It's just pointless. I, I love to smash one of your guitars. I remember a jam I yours. had. No, no, no. We're with, talking about your guitars. No, no, your guitars. We, I remember a jam I had with Pat and Steph, the bass player. Remember at X, the uh, I think it was yes, yes, AOE yes, yes. and the fucking uh, Machiavelli Dementia. We play a show. Yeah. The show where I fucking threw, I was bleeding from my hand. I was playing the fucking flute and I threw the flute at someone. I had a trouble show, at that show. Yeah, exactly, man. man. That was a fucking good night. But I remember that night, like with Steph, he was playing bass, playing bass, you know, like he was with us for a little while, but at one point he didn't keep up, but he was always hitting his bass on my cymbal at one point, like just to make a hit, which was cool, yeah. right? You break my cymbal, motherfucker. Okay, exactly. At one point he's like, fuck man, I'm damaging my shit. I was like, no shit you are, you know? <laughs> like, uh, that was a few weeks of pay and fucking uh, childhood money right there, man. You know, like, fucking don't touch my shit, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You don't touch you anyone else's equipment. I'll, I'll break I... my own shit, but don't you fucking touch my shit. You know what I'm saying? At that show, we sold a lot of tickets. A lot of tickets. Ashes of Eden, I'm talking about. Splashes sold of semen. a lot of fucking tickets. There was a <laughs> lot of show people. show you That's Dans Next. la Rue, yeah. that show. Yeah. Oh, Dans it la was Rue. for Dans la Rue. And then we were playing in the middle. And they cut our set list at like not even 15 minutes. Oh, Shit. remember that you show, David? And I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, we sold all those tickets. You let everybody else play 35 minutes. They're cutting us so the bands after us can get longer sets. Who was playing after you? I forget who the hell it well, was. Because we, play, we were playing me. first. No, no, it was two punk bands after us okay, or one yeah, punk yeah. band. I don't know what the fuck it was. Right. And uh, she came. They... They're like, no, you you guys have to get off stage. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to play one more song. They're like, no, you can't even play one more song. And I was like, fuck off. And the microphone was right there. And she I said, we're going to play another song. When we started, she pulled the wire right out of my guitar, like a savage from the other side, you yeah. know? And the mic was there. And I was like, oh, fuck you. I was like, everybody here paid to see us anyway. Mm. I said, you know, and then people, people, even Mike was like that so pissed at me it was like that was a fucking dickhead thing to say man <laughs> i was like that was a fact yeah. i didn't mean it in a bad way but there's like 30 fucking people that bought tickets yeah. 40 people bought tickets specifically from our band they're the ones standing here mm. and they're telling us to get off but, but yeah. you know what i so mean don't like, touch my shit bitch that you know? thing happened i think I wouldn't have at, said the, it if she didn't at the right that. place at the right time you know what i'm saying like i mean out of all of this we had a great picture like that picture, that picture dude, yeah. Dude, dude, you know what? I, I got a, I got a story similar. But to all that. I'm saying is that that event that happened at that point, at that moment, I think is the same night David keyboards was not on for the first two songs. I don't. Maybe I'm mixing nights, but I remember one of the show that we play with you guys at Lex. David for the first song or two, his keyboard was not loud so enough. So we're a thrash band yeah, for two dude. songs. And at one point we played at Alex with you and you guys, the sound was bleeding everywhere. Yeah, that was the yeah. more, that, that's the headline. We did a headlining show yeah. there. I remember and that night too, man. You plug in this amp and you're coming out of every single amplifier. Yeah, dude. that was fucked up. And so we were yeah. about to cancel the show. No, but you, you guys just fixed. went fucking straight in, man. You guys well, we still did it, it man. somehow in the end. Yeah, yeah. Somebody so did something. It worked. To go with your story about the, uh, like the, the bitch Don't pulling your... Don't touch my your, guitar. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> not the same thing. They didn't touch the instruments, but uh, we had a show at Emergenza. Um, 20... Scamergenza. Yeah, pretty much. 2012, early 2012, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely early 2012. And uh, it was, we were right in the middle, like uh, we had a good time spot, like 8.39 or something like that. We came in and they don't give you, they don't like give you access to backstage. So you're literally with your equipment waiting to go on stage. And we're like, you know how much fucking equipment we brought? Like, why the hell would you do that? Uh, and they were like the guard, like the guards, the fucking like Oscar the Grouch security over there was all like, you can't leave this here. It's like, where else do you want me to fucking put it? You're not giving me access to backstage, you moron. Like, where do you want me to put equipment? I'm here to play. So we go, I get on stage, we finally play, but they are already running late. Mm. So I don't know if the, the security had told them that we were being a little, like being jackasses or whatever, but they were being the jackass. We were just responding like, where else do you want us to put our equipment? Right. Um, we set up, they only gave us 20 minutes because they were already running late. Um, so we're playing, we were told half an hour, we sold tickets, we brought people. We played, we played 20 minutes, we had one song left, so we were perfect within the half hour. 
and they cut us off. We didn't, uh, for, at first we didn't know we were cut off, but I couldn't hear vocals. I was like, what the hell is going on? They cut off my guitar, like from the, the, the monitors. So I just went and boosted my guitar volume up so that everyone could hear. And it, the crowd reaction was incredible because the singer started fighting with the, the, sound, uh, the, um, the sound guy on stage. Hmm. And he's like, no, I'm not fucking getting off. You told me half an hour. I haven't even played 25 minutes yet. Right. So we, I just kept playing. I went into a solo and the crowd was nuts. It was like incredible that the, we did, we played well, but it was them freaky, uh, us saying, fuck you, we're, don't, like, we're not going to do what you tell us. <laughs> that the crowd was Rage like, holy fuck. Shit. I still get people telling me about that show now. This was in 2012. And people come up, he's like, dude, I saw you play Denver Junta. You're the band that they cut off, right? I was like, yeah. It's like, dude, that was incredible. So that, that whole incident made us known from the city. Years of playing, one show where we say, no, we're not going to fucking listen to you. And everyone's that, 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 That's the one thing I don't like about Emergenza is like, you know, they're like, so they want you to sell tickets. So you sell tickets, you play with th two other bands or three other bands, whatever it is that night. And they count the number of votes through hands raised. Well, your friends are not going to raise their hand for another band. Yeah. Your friends are there to raise their hand for you. So at the end of the day, it's really how many tickets you sold. Well, for us, it wasn't a hand thing. It was like they had judges were, and some other butt fuck uh, band see, no, won. No, when I did it, it was some other butt fuck band won, and they were like, it was like whatever they won, but they were not known. I'd not, I'd never heard of them before or after, and that was it. So you won, big fucking deal. I made out with the whole crowd, knowing who we were by the end of that night, and that was that's what you go for. You go for the crowd. I don't care about winning. Did you say he made out? He made out with the crowd. crowd. That's I what he said. I did. You know, I've seen you do it, Armin. I've seen you get on your knees and suck a man's penis. Earlier you said you listened to... Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, what's his name? Colin... It's uh, not true. Ariadne? Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. Did you did you listen to the whole thing? Yeah. Did Why you, are you holding your dick? I'm not holding my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it on a He's counter? Italian. I'm they Italian. Hold you dick. gotta hold my dick. You know, once I was at a comedy show and I was sitting down and you know when comedians, they, they start talking picking to the audience people, or whatever, yeah. right? They start picking on people. So I'm sitting in the front He's and, holding the old bras rule. And, and no, no, <laughs> he's, he's like, he's like rambling to someone. And then he's like, and you, I know you're Italian. You got one hand on the drink and the other hand on my on your dick. <laughs> and I literally was sitting like this, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so you, you heard that thing. Did you hear the part where they said how, how Trump, they think he's losing it yeah. because you, they played a clip of Trump in 1988, humble, talking normal. Even the, the, like uh, Rogan would point it out, his speech pattern was different. And you know, like the interviewer even says, like I heard that that you can be vindic vindictive uh, regarding uh, so and so. Now, if it was the Trump of now, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go after him. I'm gonna make sure he pays. I'm gonna make sure he goes back. He's, is that what you're getting? No. Oh, so yeah, and and he's just like talking really calm he's like no i'm not gonna go after him there's no point in that like i uh, i'm you know I, I i lost money i'm going to uh, you know and i'm like wow that doesn't even sound like the same guy well, the president, like being president gives you a set of balls that well, you know, yeah, yeah, it was like that before yeah it was like that before so it's like maybe he's just losing it like and if you look at him before you mean like going crazy kind of losing yeah it? why else would he be going like a like going off on shit well all people the time? have said this for a while like even before he was becoming president that he was he, he, if you look at it back in the 80s, yes, he was arrogant to people he knew, but yeah. he, he, he ha, it was well-spoken. Yeah, he was well-spoken. Yeah. I don't know how he like lost his vocabulary and he's just like, he was, his voice got fucked up, he's got it's, fat, you know he looks what? orange. You know what? This is the only scenario where I believe that tr the original Donald Trump died and then they replaced him with a guy. He's alien! Yeah, he's, he's the real <laughs> alien! Oh, he's, he's not an alien. He's an alien-human hybrid. Because like they say this about like, you know, um, Paul, McCartney. Paul McCartney or Eminem, they say that they, the original guys died and they replaced them. Eminem was the weird one because it's like i know it's eminem vocal patterns and the way his voice talks uh, the way his, he speaks oh, because his voice sounds different from no, no, Slim shady no no to, no uh, his voice sounds the same that's how i can tell his voice and his because vocal his patterns, voice patterns? So, yeah because of the way you speak and announce it, and he has this very specific tone in his voice when he raps and his rapping ability has not changed it's a different flow but it's still eminem yeah. so i know that they didn't get some guy to like just replace him plus he just lost weight because he was high he got fat and then he lost weight well, and it's like it's like when uh, the ultimate warrior came back after a few years when merlin Manson was, was he got fat else. at one point 
What? I was convinced there was someone else. Yeah, he looked like someone else. So much. Yeah, you walked in with a fucking suit with muscles on the suit. You know what I'm saying? Almost. <laughs> yeah, no, you well, did. You off did? Steroids, First time right? you walked in the, the uh, you might be right. You, yeah, his suit was a suit like right, 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 right. So anyone who gets off of drugs will look completely different after. But like Donald Trump, it's like it's complete. Vocal patterns are different. It's like Everything's those. Different. It's like those those movies that they, they make about like oh, um, you ever see a GI Joe? Yeah. Okay. So the second one, they have the they replace the president, and they're looking at his like the way you hold your your thumbs like this, mm. and the, he had shifted because it was an actual guy. Spoiler alert! It right, was an actual right, guy who right, played right. was true. taking over for the president, and he was holding it like this. He's like, right. that's not something you consciously do. No, it's true. So it, it's just a natural. And it has thing. something to do with how you think. Yeah. Uh, the way I, well, you place that they say thumbs. that. Yeah, I know. And the way true. you cross your arms and yeah. the way you say things. Yeah. Like instead of um, instead of saying like, you would say or, or something like mm. that. Um, and or, they were, um, yeah. So that, that was yeah. one thing that they were like, "Hey, this is." I know it's a movie, a Hollywood movie, but it, it's very, it's the truth. His vocal patterns and the way he enunciates and, and says speech is different from the way he says stuff when he was in the eighties and nineties. Because now that whole like China, you know, he would never have said that in the eighties. China, 80s. yeah, yeah. It, it, he does say it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. China, but like, China. And, and like, okay, yeah, his voice is a little more raspy than it was. Yeah, before. you get older, but yeah, that's normal. But he, it's everything. Like he, he. Just you know, a different person. That's kind of, you, you know, know? And, and you know what, that, what's funny is I always, I remember when I was like growing up, like when I was younger, I remember thinking like Donald Trump is a, is the man, you know, like he was dude, he someone was, to look up to. He was a billionaire. He was in whatever. movies that I watched as a kid. Yeah. I knew who he was. He was in the Little Rascals. He was in Home Alone. And then when I was in high school, I used to do the, like this, you know, when he goes, you're fired with his hand. I used to do that to people's necks. You're fired. So I knew who he was. But even I, I think that you're fired is the start of his uh, craziness. No, because the first season he would go, you're fired. And then over time, he, you're fired. You know, he, he would, it uh, became more exaggerated. He built a character. I think he built uh, a character. Went into Guys, Hollywood. you don't want to talk about your fire, sir? Yeah, fire. Yeah, fire. I know where you're going with this. You're fire. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This Vince McMahon. Kennedy McMahon. McMahon. Kennedy McMahon. You think WWE? When he went on there, he created a character. It was <laughs> amazing. He hasn't gotten out of it. He's probably just had a heart attack in the middle. Awesome. Nobody you know what, told know him to step out of character. Awesome. Nobody. You know what's funny is, is Vince McMahon created the, the McMahon character oh, for himself. You know, and I, I, it's like, it's funny because he was not a billionaire until... I guess later on, I guess until Trump, maybe. Dude, man, it was amazing when he shaved his head, man. I mean... Uh, that was we it, all man. wanted to see Trump get his head shaved. We all could have. It was easier. No, but we all knew it was McMahon. Anyway. I know, yeah, but you know? I needed to see Trump shaved head. Hey, but Stone Cold gave Trump a gave stump the whatever. I, I got the this, Trump the stunner. stunner. Yeah. <laughs> Stone Cold gave Trump the stunner. Yeah, he could say that he that he stunned the president. He did. But you're very right about like getting away from politics and whether you agree with him or not. His he his vocal stylings have changed in the last twenty years, and that doesn't happen often with old people who get older. And that's another thing. He he he's he ran in the Republican Party, but he was a Democrat before prior yeah. to all of this stuff. So it's 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 a big change. I mean, Al Pacino, you could say, kind of changed his vocal patterns. Mm. Like you, if you look at him in like The Godfather, yeah, that's very, an actor. Right, but even when his acting changed, you could tell everything after, uh, like, uh, ooh, ah, it's all the same Pacino. It's not mm. the same, like, well-spoken, clear, quick-paced Pacino of the 70s or whatever. It's not the, you know, Serpico, uh, um Pacino. It's the fucking Devil's Advocate Pacino. Well, even, uh, maybe you don't know them as well, but Wu-Tang Clan, RZA, I find, changed his voice from, the, like, the first album and, I guess, Method Man's album to after that, he just... He went from that like aggressive in your face kind of style to this more well, yeah, calm or lower there's voice. There's a different flow. That's singing and, and writing. Yeah, I know, I know. But just to say, I, it's a conscious thing. But I always preferred that more aggressive. In yeah, your yeah, face. you prefer it. But like I, as a vocal styling and like acting or whatever, that's changing a whole like yeah. style and in, in, in person too. My like if you, if twenty years from now I'm not speaking as quick as I usually do, mm. then you know something's wrong. I might I might be fucking the head. Like if I'm like, hey guys, um, what if you start speaking quicker? I imagine then you're on I could probably get, I could probably talk a little quicker than I can right now. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them you assume I'm human. What I gotta do to get a thirty? I'm super human. Innovator and rebel. That's good because you're articulating, man. I can hear the words. I cannot do that shit. You can't articulate your shit. It's not fast like. Re remember the micro machine guy? You probably. You probably, <laughs> you probably, <laughs> you probably talk French. Fast? I'm pretty sure you can do it in French. The French talk really fast. 
Oh man. They say, but you, yeah. you, you, you don't really want to get into it. Talk in French, really fast. Say something really fast in French. Nice. Still, yeah, but really still, I don't know if you're saying words there, man. Madison? You no, no, no. So Billy Madison, they had the guy speaking in French to him, and he's like, slow Dude, down. Did you understand like, most of the all. shit I not said? Not uh, versus versus most of the thing you said. My thing was clear. He's got it. My thing was clear. He's got it exactly. Say, I missed that. The Billy Madison, the French teacher in there, he says it exactly like that. No, talking about Madison, the restaurant. No, Billy Madison, say it again. Too close. Vous êtes incompétent, vous n'allez jamais avoir cette classe pour tout de suite. Non, mais no. he said, he said no. it perfect. What was it that I said? I forgot. Vous êtes incompétent. Ok, I'll help you. You're, you're, uh, you're incompetent, you won't understand what I'm saying. Je ne vais jamais comprendre ce que Ah, forget it. Moi, il écoute, la seule chose que vous devez faire, c'est que vous devez faire des policiers, les 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 You did an MC, you can't remember because of the Olympics at Cosmo. Did you? Because 81 was the year of the cock. 81 was the year of the cock. It was, and I'm born in 81, motherfucker. Speaking of cock. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Yo, ass better call somebody. No, speaking of, uh, so, so there's this, uh, there's this priest. Uh, he, uh, he, he would priest of the village basically he would watch over uh chickens like the chickens of various he people. would go come here my boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyways he had a couple of chickens himself so during the sunday mass he decides to ask the people he's like has anyone seen cock and you know i uh, seen a cock and so obviously you know the guys all stand because he tells him like stand up he's like no no, no sorry let me re-say that has anyone seen uh Oh, yeah, okay, but let me restart what we oh said. Like, has anybody seen your cock? So the guy stand. Then he's like, no, let me re-say it. Has anybody seen a cock? So now the women stand up. He's like, no, 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 let me re-say it. Has anybody seen someone else's cock? A few women stand up now. Then he's like, okay, hold on. Has anyone seen my cock? All the nuns stand up. <laughs> 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 I should have changed it to make it more. For those of you who can't see us, he did a very sneaky smile and a twirl of yeah, his man. finger, right? <laughs> yeah, Maybe I should have made the joke more vulgar. I guess we can. All the altar boys stood up. Ho! Oh! 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 And on that note, we only got a confession to say to you. <laughs> Who wants to go? I have nothing to say. It's not really a confession There's right no now. Confession. There's no confession anymore. Well, even though it was really a confession, we talked about old stories. I was reminded of a tape that I recorded with Tim and Dono in like 99. I'm going to find that. All mm. I have to say is next podcast, we have to make the voicemail to Satan one in the podcast. Done deal. I have it. We just got to make it happen, man. It's going to be better than this. Stay tuned, man. That's all I have to say. Uh, all I got to say is I have to uh, strix vary. No, I don't. I must strix vairi. <laughs> well, I must uh, strix vairi. Uh, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I've only got a couple of words to say to you. See?